Hi, my name is Paul Horn. I am a California estate planning specialist. In my office, all we do is living trust and probate. We don't do immigration law. We don't do divorces, criminal law. This is all we do. This is our specialty, okay? I'm a state bar California certified specialist in this area of the law. So today, you know, before we get into talking about estate planning, um, just a little bit of myself, um, in addition to being um, an estate planning attorney, I'm also a CPA. Um, this is a picture of my family. Uh, it's my wife, uh, my four-year-old son, my six-year-old daughter, okay? Um, all right, so let's get into estate planning. So this, this um, cartoon drawing that you see in front of you is the receptionist saying to you, hey, there's death and taxes, they're here to see you. You know, tax would like to come in first, followed by death. Death, unfortunately, is 100% undefeated, right? We're all heading that way. So estate planning is important. So the goal of estate planning, the goal of your trust ought to be to give what you have to whom you want the way you want to give it to them and when you want it, okay? Um, at the same time, when you create your trust, you're going to be putting all your assets in the trust you want to have a mechanism where if you have dementia, you have Alzheimer's, that all of these assets are used for your benefit first to take care of you, okay? And also, you know, once you pass away, how do we protect the, your minor children? How do, how do we protect the surviving spouse? We want to make sure that there is no litigation in distribution, distributing your asset to your children. We want to make sure that your value, your ideas are passed on to your children, your grandchildren, and to maximize the asset that goes to your loved one and uh, protect it from the creditors as well. So a good estate planning, a comprehensive estate planning ought to have the trust, okay? So the trust is what avoids probate. The trust is what allows the house to go to your children, step up basis, when they sell the house, it's tax-free. That's the trust. There, there'll be something called a poor will in here that says all my asset goes to my trust for my children. Um, this binder, this, this comprehensive estate planning binder ought to have an advanced health care directive, a durable power of attorney, a living will, a HIPAA authorization, a um, personal property memorandum, an assignment of all your personal property to the trust, a, cert a certificate of trust, a trust ID card. Yeah, so, so your trust, you're going to have a trust ID card that identifies what the name of your trust is. And if you own an LLC, a corporation, all that would be assigned into your trust. So what is a revocable living trust? A revocable living trust is a private document where you say, hey, I'm going to put all my assets into the trust as long as I'm alive, I am in charge of these assets. And once, once I die, then it goes to my children. Okay, so that's what a living trust is. When it goes to your children, it avoids probate. It goes in such a manner where there is less fees involved, maximizing the amount that your children will get. So what assets are included in your revocable living trust? Well, all your real estate, all your cash, stocks, bonds, investment, retirement account. And upon your death, it will go to your children in a tax-free manner and protect it, okay? All right, so a revocable living trust. When you go and create the living trust, we put the house into the trust, your bank account, all your assets. As long as you're alive, you're the initial trustee, meaning you're in charge. You're in charge of it. You can sell the house, refinance the house, whatever you want. And the trust will say, hey, if I'm disabled, if I'm incapacitated, someone will be there to take care of it for me, to, to use my money to take care of me. And upon my death, I have four children. I'm going to choose so-and-so to be in charge, for example, to sell the house, divide by four, and so forth. Okay? All right. So a revocable living trust is important in a sense that it's very private. Okay? In a re if you have a trust that avoids probate, probate is very public. Probate exposes all your assets, 
and who are your children, okay? Imagine having the world find out that your daughter, your son is getting four or five million dollars. You don't want that. So a trust keeps things private, the value of your estate, who are the beneficiary, okay? It's very private. And a trust also escape medical recovery. It's huge. In California, if you are on Medi-Cal and you do not have a trust, if you're on Medi-Cal, if you don't have a trust, California is going to want that money back. So in plenty of cases, if you pass away, the government's going to want the children to sell the house so they can recoup their Medi-Cal reimbursement. Don't, you don't want that to happen to you, so get a trust. Get a trust so that you can avoid Medi-Cal re Medi recovery so that your house can go to your children, okay? So we talked about you and your husband, your wife, putting every, all the assets in here. So now upon the first spouse to pass away, we don't want the surviving, we want the surviving spouse to live a fabulous life, to enjoy life, to be happy. But at the same time, we don't want unnecessarily undue influence of the second spouse moving in and being opportunistic to take all your hard-earned asset and nothing left for your children. Okay, so how so how do we do that? Well, we can create the trust in such a manner to protect your the surviving spouse, meaning surviving spouse. I love you very much, my dear, right? You can use whatever you want, but if you ever were, but but let's build in some safeguard that if you get remarried, we don't want third party interference to come in and drain all our asset and leave our children with nothing. So we can create the trust to prevent that sad situation, okay? All right, so now, now we move on to you and your husband, you and your wife, both pass away goes to your three children. How do we get the money to your three children in a safe, protected manner? Meaning, for example, if they were to get a divorce, they would lose the money, or creditors suing them, or maybe your son, your daughter is not financially sound and managing money. How do we protect them, right? So, what, what, what we do is this. We make sure that your trust is able to protect your children, right? Maybe they're too young. Maybe they're ill, disabled. Maybe they, are, they have an addiction problem, gambling, drugs, creditors issue. We can build your trust in a manner where we deliver the money to them in a vault, meaning that upon your death, should your children be going through some financial storm or legal nightmare, your money is going to your son, your daughter is protected. Okay, so so how so how we do that is we'll sit down with you, we'll talk, and we'll determine, you know, together we'll see which works out best because the majority of the trust just says, hey, when I die, the house goes to my son, my daughter. Well. That's called an outright distribution. And that may not be the answer because your son might run out and get a Lamborghini immediately, right? You may not want that, okay? Um, maybe we say, okay, hold on a second. Let's stage out the distribution in, in various age. For example, a third at age 25, a third at age 30, a 35, and so forth, okay? Or we can say, hold on a second. Maybe a better way to pass on our money is through a lifetime beneficiary control trust called an inheritance trust, where we give them the money in such a manner where it stays in the vault for them only and only them, okay? Uh, where it can withstand a divorce, withstand a huge lawsuit, nightmare, bankruptcy, and so forth, okay? All right, yeah, so a, so a trust, how do you want to be remembered? What value do you want to pass on to your children? How do you, how do you want to protect your hard-earned asset? That should what makes a great trust, a great estate planning. A durable power of attorney is very important. It ought to be in this bind as well, a durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney says, hey, if I become incapacitated, I trust my husband, I trust my wife, I trust my daughter, I trust my son to sign my name on my behalf, okay? Because if you don't have a durable power of attorney built in, what's going to happen is the government will take over. 
The government say, hey, you're over 18. You've lost mental capacity. You're unable to sign. That's called conservatorship, where the court takes over. You don't want that. So a durable power of attorney built into your estate planning as part of your trust will avoid this embarrassing conservatorship process, okay? Now, an advanced healthcare directive is very important because it, currently when you go to the hospital, when you go to the doctor, you speak on your own behalf. But in a situation where you are unconscious, where, where you need someone to step in your shoe and speak on your behalf, the legal document to do that is known as the advanced healthcare directive. Very critical to have, okay? In, in certain situations, you want your wife, your son, your daughter to access your medical record to bring it to a specialist to save your life. Because the medical record is confidential, you're going to need the HIPAA authorization. And that would be in here as well, too. Now, something called a living will, because we've seen cases where family are fighting. You know, you are brain dead, you're a vegetable, but they're fighting in the family to keep you that way, to hook you up to a machine just to pump your blood, even though you're permanently brain dead, we have document that says, hey, if you wish that just to let you go, don't fight in court, don't waste the estate money, we can do that too, do something called a living will. We'll also give you a poor will will that says, hey, everything I own goes through the trust for my children. Um, so estate planning, who is it for? Well, it's for everyone, right? The only person that do not need a trust is someone who never die, right? And we know that everybody needs a living trust because everybody at one time or another is going to face, you know, death, okay? So, so estate planning is for everyone. So beware of the bare bone trust out there, trust that is not personalized to your need, trust that doesn't protect against remarriages, trust that doesn't protect your children in a divorce, lawsuit, and so forth. Um, you know, a, a good trust ought to say, go to my children, and then my children were the pastor, goes to my grandchildren. So only a, a, a good trust done by a specialist like myself is going to have that cater to your family. All right, so our estate planning process, we meet with you, we understand your family dynamic, your asset, then we design the trust, we communicate back and forth, meeting, email, phone call, whatever it takes. Once it's done, you come into the office and you sign the legal document, you sign this binder. Then we take the houses and we go and record it for you. We give you funding instruction. All this takes about two weeks to do. It takes two weeks to do. So finding the right attorney is very important. You must find an attorney that have this logo. You see on the screen this logo? This logo is the State Bar of California helping helping the public says, hey, this lawyer is a certified specialist. Less than 1% of all attorneys in California are state bar specialists. So you want to look for this logo like myself. I am a state bar specialist. So make sure you have that. And reputation is important too. Uh, Google, Yelp, check them out. What are people saying about them? I can tell you how great I am. What are my, my past client, what are they saying about me? Check us out. We have the best review on Google, on Yelp, okay? Um, so a certified specialist is important, right? Because we have to go, we have to go and get additional education in estate planning, in a trust. We have to pass extra examination. We have to be practicing in a certain amount of years. All this comes together, all these criteria, the State Bar of California, they look at to see if you're worthy of being a board certified specialist. I look forward to helping with your trust, with your family. So, so give me a call. Thank you so much.